And I'm here to tell you, you ought to go back and check to see if the preacher even know what he's talking about. That's right. That's right. You take my word for it. I talked about the Berea church. How when they went back, they confirmed that what was said was true. So this morning, you don't have Bible pen and paper. I know some of y'all use y'all phone. Don't be lying in church saying you're using your phone for no. And you text it. Mm. <laughs> I may not know what you're doing. All right. The Lord knows what you're doing. And I pray the Lord lock it up the way you can. <laughs>
But I'm going to tell them no. Yeah, some of y'all might put the mother before you have never seen before. Uh -uh. <coughs> I'm going to tell them no. Let me tell you why. Because God has made me a steward over this flock. The St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church flock. And when I give God his due diligence, he'll allow me to blossom in this church more than I would if I try to spread myself off out across five different churches. Amen. Take whatever God gave you, no matter how big or small it is, you water it. You nurture it. And you take care of it and let God increase it. My Lord. See, I want us to understand that God doesn't just want us to come here and pay tithes and give money and give offering. Now, you ought to. You ought to. That, you ought to tithe. You ought to give offering. You ought to offer up. Give some to God. But God don't just want your money. He wants your service. Mm -hmm. That's, I got job, I got this, I got that, I got other. Well, I tell you what, I beat all of y'all. I got five children in a job. <laughs> and then what? I ain't the best at it, but I'm in the house. <laughs> Helping take care of all five of them. I ain't saying I'm all that. I'm just saying, get what all of us got responsibility. When the twelve were called, they had their own thing going on. But they left all to follow Christ. What you saying, Pastor? Quit my job. Don't you that. Can't do that. He who does not work is cannot tithe. They just call it all yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, you got to follow the Holy Spirit and do whatever He tells you to do. And I promise you, you can accomplish more following his lead than you would if you had your five-year plan, your ten-year plan, and your portfolio. Because God has a way of, if he gives you a vision, he'll provide provision. That's yes. Is God pleased with the way I'm handling my ministry? Am I shortchanging God? Now that don't just apply to me to the church. That don't just apply to just certain people. We look at our walk with God. Is God pleased with the way we handle ourselves in the world? Well, you know, preacher, we're not perfect. God, God know, God know my heart. Yeah, He knows it and He wants it to. And when a heart is convicted by God's word, some changes gonna be made. And get what? We can look around and find wrong with everybody else, y'all. But Lord, it's hard to look in that mirror. And I'm going to tell you, I've learned. If I spend more time in that mirror than looking at other folks, I wouldn't have time to talk about it. Because i got my own issues to deal with. I'm going to turn your attention to another script. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. And I pray that y'all don't just take this, throw it on the cabinet, throw it on the counter, be cleaning up. Oh, that's where it was. But that you take it and you study it. And that you ask the Holy Spirit to share with you what he wants you to know. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. Look what it says. It says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest, when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Ooh, the Holy Spirit hit me all upside the head. I'm here to tell you, because how many of you know that when you're doing ministry for God, that you can actually walk in such a way to where when you do ministry, 
folk will look at you and say like, yeah, whatever. It's not that you are disqualified. But when you go to tell somebody else something, and here it is, you doing any kind of thing under the sun, how in the world you expect folk to listen to anything you got to say? Jesus. I want to ask this question. I want to ask this question. Do I hold myself to the same standard that I hold others to? See, it's easy to look out. It's hard to look in. Do I hold myself to the same standard that I hold other folk to? Something to think about. If your leadership, based on your leadership, this one right here messed me up, and I, I wanted to stop, and I'm like, Lord, I can't take no more. Based on your leadership, would you even want to be a part of your own ministry? <laughs> would you want to be a part of that which you led if you wasn't the leader? joining your own ministry. It's time to reflect, reminisce, and rewind and talk to God. <clears throat> kind of like relationships. <laughs> when we look at relationships, how many of you know that mother, daughter, mother, son, son, father, father, son, relationships, even husband, wife relationships, that you can damage your relationship in your marriage by always pointing out what your spouse or what's wrong with your spouse. You know what it does? It causes you not to take a look at even what it is that you're doing not to help the relationship. It causes you to really and truthfully forget about all that you have or have not done to make it better. See, we can fault find all the time. And we can say this one ain't doing that. She don't this, he all that. He, yeah, he this and he that and he the other. But at the same time, how many of you know that you can't control nobody else? The only person that you can have limited control over is yourself. And I say limited. But that's some stuff we done done. And you be like, I can't believe I done that. And then you come back and repent. You apologize. And this, that, and all this other stuff. But the only one that you can actually control, limited control, is yourself. I want husbands and wives to ask themselves this question. I want y'all to listen to it. It, it, it blessed my life. And even help me in my marriage. If you had to be married to you, <laughs> would you be want? Would you want to be married to yourself? Preaching this and preaching that 
and preaching to others, but at the same time, neglecting the fact that there's also a reflection back on us. Amen. Wow. My, my, my. Would you want to be a part of this church if you wasn't a member already? Based on how you <coughs> conduct business in the church. It's a million dollar question. Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. <coughs> Proverbs 3 and 5. We done quoted this. We quoted, but like nothing. And how many of you know we quote that? So really and truthfully, in many cases, we don't even need it. Romans 3 and 5 and also 6. It says this trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not part of, not a little bit, not some of, all of your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. That suggests that you can revert to something that, guess what, that a jack you up. Watch me, now look what it said. And it said, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Him, who him? The Lord himself. And he shall what? Direct your path. That means make your path straight. See, what we do is, we got our plan, and you're supposed to plan. But at the same time, we plan things out to the point to where when they don't go the way we think they're supposed to go, we think we got a failed plan. But how do you know that God's plan trumps your plan? And when you leave him out of your plan, you lean into your own understanding. And you're making your way on. <clears throat> because if you do a study and you translate it correctly or deeply, it says he'll make your paths smooth. <laughs> Some rocky stuff we don't have to go through. I want to ask you this question. And this goes for everybody. Do you consult with and consider God and His Word about all, let the church say all, all. the decisions you make in your life? Committee. If you gave it all, some stuff you wouldn't do. Some decisions you wouldn't make. Some places, oh Jesus, you wouldn't go. Some stuff you wouldn't take part of. If you considered him and his word and all things. Oh Jesus. If you're a leader, I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you sincerely seek the Lord about your ministry? In order to operate according to his will. Because how many of you know that sometimes what makes sense to us ain't what God wants us to do? Do we sincerely seek God about our ministry? I'm talking about take out some time intentionally. Take out time and pray and ask God, God, what you want me to do? With the ministry you placed in my hand. Lord, what you want me to do with my family? Lord, what you want me to do as a mother? What do you want me to do as a father? But we'll wake up day after day after day after day, leaning to our own understanding. And I'm here to tell you, the Lord wants us to be what the world would call crazy enough. To believe what he says. 
because I'm getting tell you, you gonna do some stuff, law the law's way, folk gonna call you crazy. Folk gonna say something wrong with you. But at the same time, if you seek him sincerely and he speaks, you do it. And when you do it, watch God move. He'll make your path smooth. He'll make a way. Lord, that old woman say, I don't know where you Watch it, watch it. Lord, have mercy. See, it, it's, it's kind of like this. And I'm here to tell you, the older I get, I know I ain't that old, so I'm talking about but the older I get, I realize that I got to get away from that I got it mentality. Mm -hmm. All right. Because mm -hmm. this pastoring thing, I can't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. I need some help. Yes. Mothers, you can't do it by yourself. Fathers, you can't do it by yourself. Ministry leaders, you can't do it by yourself. Because I've learned Jesus when it's a one man show. you missing out. Oh, yes. Yes. Not telling you nothing I heard. <laughs> I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. How many of us can say? You say, well, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. And after you done made a mess, you say, Lord, this evening that I ever fall. If I ever needed you, I sure will need you now. After you made the mess. But how many of you know that some stuff we don't have to get in if we consult with him? Yeah. Oh. Colossians 3.23. Colossians 3.23. Now, if you came to shout, you, sh you should have been. Sister Jackson said, you should have been in Elton on Thursday. Amen. I'm telling you, pastor didn't preach. Mm -mm. The Holy Spirit had me. I'm going to tell you. And I, I'm be honest with you. I'm, I, I'm, I'm serious. I told my wife this the other day. My wife said, I want a copy of that sermon. I'm like, that must have been kind of good because you'll never ask for a copy of the sermon. <laughs> but, and I'm not talking about it, I'm talking about what I'm talking about. But I told her in reply, I said, I want a copy too. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to tell you, the Holy Spirit had his way. But at the same time, at the same time, this ain't no shout sermon. This is a sermon or a presentation to where I want to challenge. Because I mean, you know, when we stop and spit and sweat, sometimes we just kind of like shout because everything going on. Oh, but we ain't, we ain't really getting everything we need to get out of it. Don't convict us. Don't change it. No, no. We just say we had some good church. I want to challenge you. Colossians 3 23. Colossians 3 23. Colossians 3 
Because what you do is not for men. You're doing it as to the Lord. You don't respect pastor just because I'm your pastor. But you respect me because of the office that I hold. And because I represent God. And because you're doing it as unto the Lord. It ain't nothing about me. But I'm here to tell you. Lord showed me a long time ago. When I bless my past. Bless the flow. Amen. He done proven that to me. Because why? He's got to honor his word. If he told it to you, he gonna honor it. Whatever you do, do it heartily. And don't just do it out of obligation. Do it willingly. Because you want to do it. As unto the Lord. Because you are an ambassador of Christ. Wherever you go, I know your weekend excursion is a time to get away so nobody in this area or wherever you live know what you're doing so you can do whatever you want to do around wherever you want to do it so nobody around here is going to know nothing about it. But I'm here to tell you, you're a Christian 24 7. I'll see you. God does. <laughs> whatever you do, do it harder. That's to the law. Not to me. But you know what we'll do? When leadership changes, certain folk get replaced, when there's a new administration, when somebody else is in charge, we change. That's on your job. That's where you go. That's in the church. That's wherever you go. But how many of you know? It doesn't matter because when you have an attitude that you're not doing what you're doing for men and you're doing it as unto the Lord, you can do what you have to do no matter who's standing in front of you. Right, all right, all right. I want you to nudge your neighbor. I want you to tell me. I love, I love you. I'm going to do all I can to help you. All I can. But at the end of the day, it ain't about you. And it ain't about me. It ain't about me. I did that so some of y'all will be up. <laughs> But at the end of the day, it ain't about who's in charge. It ain't about who's in leadership. Seven district about to go through some changes right now. I just pray God's blessing upon them. I just pray God's blessing upon them. That how many of you know that sometimes we lose sight of ministry? Because we worry about who's the leader. If I love the Lord, can't nobody stop me from praying. If I love the Lord, can't nobody stop me from lending a helping hand. Can't nobody stop me from visiting the city. Can't nobody stop me from going into the prison. Can't nobody stop me from feeding the neck, uh, feeding the hungry and clothing the neck. Why? Because I have a heart for God. And what I do, I'm not doing it for mere men. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. Whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not me. <clears throat> no why this came to mind. But when you think of a child and their motivation for doing chores around the house. Parents, I want y'all to understand and I want y'all to listen to me good. You tell me. Now, I'm not saying you God, but I want you to put yourself in God's place. In a sense, to where to see where he's coming from or how he feels towards some of the stuff we do. But I want you to say, oh, I'm a God. No, 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 I want to point. Tell me how you feel when your child does what they do, 
not because you're going to get them a game or because you're going to let them go somewhere or because you're going to give them something. As opposed to when you say you're going to give them this, that, and the other, and they jump on you. Which one makes you light up more? When they do it on their own. That's right. Do you realize that's what God is saying to us? Do what you do because you love me. Because you're doing it as unto me. Because you're doing it because you have a heart to do it. And despite extremities and who's this and who's that and who's the other and what's going on, guess what? My ministry is not predicated on who's a part of it, where I am and where I've been planted. My ministry is predicated on whether or not I'm doing the will of God. Whatever you do, do it heartily and to the Lord and not to me. I'm going to say this and I pray you take it. Out of the spirit in which I give. When you have a love for God, there's some stuff pastor ain't going to have to tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When you in the ministry that God called you to, there's some stuff you're going to do just because you love being a part of that ministry. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm use the illustration here, and I pray y'all don't take it the wrong way. But I'm going to use this illustration, and I've done it before. And I'm not doing it to try to pick my chest out of that, but I just want to prove it for My son, my youngest son is sitting right there. Now, watch me. I want y'all to listen to me. When we was at Good Hope, and even now, when we was at Good Hope, when we would walk through the door and he didn't see a drummer on them drums, the bar would take off like Walter P. <laughs> and if you got in his way, he might run over you. And if you knocked him down, he'd get right back up. And he'd still be looking to see if anybody's still sitting there or not sitting there. And I'm here to tell you, once he get there, when the real drone show up, you'll look at him like that. What you doing here? <laughs> and if he was from the old church, he'd say, I shall not, I shall not be moved. <laughs> anyway. Not because daddy forced him to do it. Not because I said you better get on them drums if nobody's standing there. Because it was in his heart. And he could care less who on the piano. <laughs> Matter of fact, he'd attack. You won't follow us. <laughs> I heard somebody be just like his dad. I heard somebody some of them. Right, you grab me? Says and 
whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to me. When you realize that God has called you to do something, whatever that something is, you're going to give God your 100%. And nobody going to have to tell you nothing. You'll be up at night doing stuff. You'll be doing ministry. You'll be doing that and doing the other. And I'm here to tell you, even when you've been hurt in ministry, you still do it. Because I'm here to tell you, just like Jeremiah, we're like fire. And you have that talk of Lord, Lord, you show me. I don't know about this. You show you call me to do this. <laughs> and then the Lord... After you, you know, get past yourself. Go do what I told you. <laughs> yes, sir. Whatever you do, do it as the Lord and not me. See, I'm going to you. See, whatever we do, it should never be, I, let me see this, let me put it like this, our effort level should never be predicated on who's here mm. and who's not here. Mm. Amen. If I got two folk in here, I'm going to preach like it's 2,000. All right. All right. All right. If you got one person, two people, three people in your ministry, you ought to do it heartily right. to the Lord. Because my effort has nothing to do with how many folk sit in front of me. How many folk is a part of what it is that I'm over. But I'm here to tell you, if you see God, God will grow your ministry. But how many of you know, <laughs> Moses couldn't lead the children of Israel till he worked with them sheep on the back side of the desert. <laughs> But you, you yeah, and, and all that to show me this. Some of us preachers, and I'm going to say us because I'm included, we want mega church status. And we can't handle the three, four we got. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, if I'm not nurturing the little few you give me, how can I expect them to grant me more stuff? And I'm telling you, Pastor had to do a self check. I'm going to tell you. And when we look at it, how many of us know that if you take whatever God gave and you treat it like it's precious, you treat it like it's worth something, that it may not be what it is that you want it to be right now, but you spend a little time with it. You nurture it and you take care of it. And God will show you that guess what? He'll allow you to bear much fruit. But it's a faith. It's a faith issue. Well, I'm going to keep you much longer. Pastor, I'm going to share this with you. Now, this is mainly for the flock. I want us, church, after you've been challenged, it's time for us to make some decisions. Yes. Time for us to make some decisions. Will you give God and St. Mary what you are? Or will you say, you know what, Pastor? This ain't where God put me. I done prayed about it. This ain't what I need to be doing. This, that, X, Y, Z. Look, I, I feel better you do that than you just, I never see you and you never return or whatever. You just go off somewhere or whatever and just not function. I'd rather that than you just do anything else. I want us to make it and purpose it in our life to either do it all the way or not at all. Not at all. How many of us can say? Now, I, I want to ask you this. I want to ask you this. Now, I want you to be honest with me. Now, we know opinions really at the end of the day don't matter that much because God, you know, what God thinks, you know, it, it trumps all of that. But how many can 
say, Pastor, give you his all. Every time. But we got, we got some, and we got some, how do you know that, humanly speaking, we struggle with commitment? Humanly speaking, if you look at the divorce rate, if you look at how people jump from church to church, if you look at how people jump from job to job, if you look at people going from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship, to relationship we struggle with commitment. And how many of you know that if I was a man that had a wife already and go around and try to take care of somebody else, that, yeah, somebody going to go lacking. Right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody going to go lacking. It's about commitment. And trusting that God will do with what it is that you purpose in your heart to do according to what he tells you. And allowing you to live a life that pleases him. I want us. God is speaking to you. And you are unsure or you are unclear. You got anything you want to share. Come talk to me. As your pastor, I come talk to me. I want to hear what you got to say. But at the same time, I'm telling you, the word is all I got. That's all I have. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm not a politician. And I don't plan to be one. I'm going to stand up for what's right. I'm going to preach his word. And I'm going to hold you to it. Even when I'm slipping myself. Because of charge. Because I'm here to tell you, God wants more from us than we can even imagine or think. <coughs> he wants more from us. It ain't about that. It ain't about me. It's about your conviction. And it's about your personal relationship with God. And your love for Him. I'm going to share this with you. And I'm going to let you go. As a pastor, we all have what we call vision. Because anytime God plants you somewhere, He's going to give you vision. If you got a pastor that don't have vision, you better check whether he's a pastor or not. And if you got a pastor that won't challenge you, you better check something out. I ain't talking about, about talking about what I'm talking about. Listen to me good. There's some things as a pastor I would like to see us do. And I want us to listen good. But pastor, why we can't do this in the meeting? Because every time I call a meeting, nobody show up. All right. Had <laughs> a church meeting. You can throw a rock and hit, and hit the back wall. <laughs> Ten things. First thing. Now, that's, this is my vision. I ain't telling nobody. Get what I want. Mm -mm. The Bible says, don't lord over them. Be an example. That's what I'm going to do. First thing. Monthly fellowships by all groups. Men, women, youth, and young adult. Every month. Second thing. Weekly choir rehearsal. Do you realize that God will take what we have and grow it to something bigger than what we think it could be? Third thing. Ushers on time, on post for Sundays, Wednesdays, and any other worship service. Notice I said, on time and on post. Fourth thing, at least 100, uh, 100 people in church every single Sunday. Huh? 
He can do it. He's done it. Something happened. Because he did this. Just remember, God can do it. At least 50 people in church every Wednesday. Six. Church service project and uh, conducted every single month. We ought to be doing something as a church every month. How many of you know we're not stationary, we're missionary? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And we should not have something we do once a year. And that's it. Some people, at Christmas time, that's when, that's when they do whatever. Y'all, God has been too good to us. For us not to give him more. I don't, but I shared with you before, a sheep going to do what a sheep going to do, and a goat going to do what a goat going to do. Whatever's in the nature of a sheep, that's what he's going to do. Whatever's in the nature of a goat, that's what he's going to do. So whatever category any one of us is in, that's what we're going to do. But how many of you know, when I have God living in me, that's some stuff I'm just going to do. Why? Because I love the Lord. Hello. Programs approved by Wednesday and prepared by Saturday evening. Number eight. New members class, men's class, women's class, couples class, and ladies class. Every Sunday school. Nine. Music, a meal, and a children's class every Wednesday evening. Last thing. No unnecessary walking or cell phone use during service. We've got to respect God's I know sometimes y'all see Pat, and I might have to work on that myself to write some things down. Sometimes folks think you're doing this. He takes an intro. He doesn't know there's some things that I have on my phone, meditation, the things that I have to remember, reminders, and stuff like that, that I use my phone for. But I'm going to have to work on that as well. Because we'll find any reason to pick up that phone, pick, pick up that uh, uh, electronic. Parents, I need your help with the children. Because guess what? How many of you know they're going to do what you left? That's right. That's right. If you say they can't do it, they ain't going to do it. Why? Well, let me say this. That, that's, how, that's how I do it at yeah, my residence. But mm -hmm. I can't make you nothing. Know. There's some meetings we need to have as far as teachers. An intake team, what is an intake team? To where we have people who make decisions for Christ. They come in and we're able to disciple them to maturity. We're able to contact them. We're able to do something on a consistent basis to where it's like a world on machine. And I shouldn't be doing it. I should be a part of the process, but I shouldn't be doing it. Midweek services, planning. That means we sit down and talk about what we need to do as far as our midweek services or Bible study. Deaconess meeting. And also, deacon meeting. And not a business meeting. Because how many of you know that as deacons, you are leaders of the church? And there's some things that God requires of you that you ought to be doing. Why? Because you are a leader of the church. And there's some business that you need to take care of. How many of you know that we as leaders, we got to be in Bible study. We got to know his word. We got to be able to witness. We got to be able to walk upright, know his word. Why? Because we're leaders. And how many of you know that any leader must be an example? I shared with you my heart. I pray nobody took offense to what I said. And if you did, that's between you. Because I, I, I've come to the realization that sometimes we can do things the right thing the wrong way. And sometimes you can jump in the flesh and do what you do. But I, I pray about this thing. I struggle with it. But at the same time, I know God gave it to me. And how many of you know you get more results when you follow His lead? <laughs> when you do it your way. Mm -hmm. 
ANDA